Very exciting box turned up the other day. Look at these vented and drilled and slotted discs from loft clutches slash loft brakes. Today we're going to chuck them on Boris. They're in need of a big overhaul. But look at those. Going to chuck those on. Let's get to it. Already opened this one. It's one of the ones I just showed you. I'll take all the bits out, a bit of a time lapse, and we'll look through what's in here. So as you can see, I've done a very artistic flat lay here for you. You've got the two front vented brakes. I haven't done the, uh, open the back ones up yet. So we're going to both uh, discover those as we see them later. Um, you've got the two seals here, the pins for the pads, the pads themselves that go in the calipers. These uh, pins, you probably know yourself, but they hold the actual pads in place and they hold the tension on there. Two of the wheel bearing nuts and washers there, as you can see. The flange gaskets, grease and new bolts actually for the calipers, which is pretty good as well as the C-clips for holding the drive shafts back in, and as I said earlier, pads, which is fantastic. It's great that this whole box comes with everything in it. I didn't realize, I thought it would maybe just pads and brake discs, but it's great to see that you actually get everything with it because um, it's a bit of a pain having to buy everything, and also sometimes when you buy it separately, you can get the wrong bits and pieces, but it's just great to know that when you buy it, you've got everything you need, and uh, yeah, you can just chuck them straight on. So it's great to see that everything comes in the box. So next up, what I need to do is get everything ready to go over to Ben's. Even though he has everything there, I like to try and take as much as I can so I don't have to ask too many times for different bits and pieces. So it's good to prep first and take stuff you need to use rather than borrowing everything. So it's been a little while, but we're back here at BHE Autos. Once again, reunited at last, unfortunately for Ben. Uh, I've got Boris up on the new lift. This is the first car ever to be up on the new lift. And it's a cool area to be in. Look at this, got my own little room filled with goodies. And we're gonna get the brakes done today. Um, you can do this on the floor, pretty much. It would be really easy to do, you just need to jack it up. But as I said before, my driveway is very steep and it's just a bit easier to do it like this. And as Ben offered, I might as well take him up on it and it's gonna be a good day, really. Nice to be back here. Check that out. Got the boxes here ready to go and I uh, hope it goes well. First things first, what you need to do is take the wheel off, as you can see here. I'm gonna do a bit of a time lapse because it's a bit slow process. I'm gonna take all the wheel nuts off and then the wheel off as well. These five nuts holding the flange on come off and then the bigger nut on the heavy duty flange. <laughs> Next, you remove the C-clip with the C-clip pliers, funnily enough, and then break off the flange. And as you can see, a bit of grease coming out of there and a bit of oil, so make sure you've got a bucket underneath. Uh, next, you go in with the 52mm large socket, remove the outer nut, and that reveals a washer underneath. So get that washer out of there, remove the second nut with the same socket, these two hold the wheel bearing in, and now you've got access to the wheel bearing. They were a little bit tough, those ones. I used a tiny little 13 mil on those with a massive pole to try and get it to come off and got there in the end. Um, you know, everything takes a bit longer than you always think, but we're there now, which is good. And plus, he hasn't been off for a while, so what I'm gonna do is bend them back with uh, the lines and we should be all right, really. Yeah, I forgot about this bit. So, if I was putting you packs, can you just... Can yeah, so what you do is put, put that back on. Yeah. And then literally just put a lever bar in between the piston and the... Ah, uh, yeah, you've got a good one here. There's me asking Ben lots of questions, as I usually do when I'm at his garage. And now we're moving on to removing the disc from the hub. So I thought I'd leave this bit in. This is me sort of struggling on my own without 
asking or knowing how to get this off exactly, going around with a pry bar and a mallet every time, and later on we'll see Ben's method of doing which looks a lot easier and wouldn't have sprung to my mind at all, but I did eventually get it off and there's the new disc ready to go on. I know looks aren't everything, but that looks a hell of a lot better. So as you probably can imagine, putting the brakes back on is just a reversal of the removal. What we're doing is just putting the bolts back in and then doing them up with the pry bar, making sure they're nice and tight. And as I'm doing this a year and a half later, I can say they're still nice and tight. I'm only halfway through the rear one side, but I thought I'd just stop now and just take a look at these, just seeing them on here. These are the back ones, let alone what the front ones are gonna look like, but it's just so cool to see these on, these sort of slotted and drilled discs on the back here. They just look so much better than the original and hopefully gonna stop a lot better. Can't wait to get them on, fully actually fitted, get out of the truck and uh, bed them in and see what they're like, but uh, they just look great. So nice to know that you've got proper discs all ready to go, nice and new, they look great. Once again, putting it back on, it's just a reversal of the previous process. This is a good chance to have a look at your wheel bearings and just assess everything going on, re-grease everything and just make sure you give it all a good service. And also please do watch what I'm doing and enjoy what I did, but don't follow me in every way because I'm not professional. Ben is, so he can advise me, but just make sure you do it on your own accord. So in a moment I'm going to get a pry bar, push the piston back into the caliper so I can put the pad back in. That is a good way of putting the pad in. And for the general use of the brakes, we're going to have grease on there but that also helps it go in there as well. See, slips in really nicely. <laughs> that could be my seat caliper. The two pins go back in as you can see there, but make sure you have the little tensioning springs that go in between the two pads. Then you put the bend clips back in and that is done. One thing I just noticed is that I haven't shown the brake pipe screws being removed. They could be very stiff and you just need to take a bit of care and just persuasion and a bit of WD-40 and you'll get them in the end. Now it's time to move on to the front. Same process as the back, pretty much just a bigger caliper, but generally just the same thing. I'm not gonna show it all in detail and run you through it, but you can just see the sort of process and what it would like to do. One thing I will show you though, is that technique Ben was using. Hold it on the hub and hit the brake really hard, and generally it comes free. There you go, that's the old one looking terrible with age obviously, and the new one looking fresh and ready to go. I'm sure those slots are gonna really help with the performance. Just see them next to each other makes a huge difference and fills me with confidence for when I'm driving next time. Thanks for Boris to die. And there you go. With that, that's all four corners done. Now it's time to just admire them, chuck the wheels back on, and get Boris back down on the ground. Make sure to test it for a year and a half, and then get an opinion from that time. So here we go. As you can see, you can get around quite a lot in that amount of time and really test out how they are in all different types of terrain and different types of conditions. So if I look back to when I first installed them, I would say um, obviously there's a bit of bedding in time. You want to be nice and careful as you start. You know, you don't want to do too much hard braking and also they're not extremely effective and that's the same with all disc brakes when you chuck them on. But once they really bed in and even before they bed in I felt the difference straight away and that is something even a year and a half ago I can still remember chucking them on and being happy with that immediate bite sort of and I don't want to say this more sporty sort of bite <laughs> this is definitely not a sporty vehicle but it definitely felt 
more, well, less sluggish, I would say, to be honest. Um, as we all know, the sort of defender brakes aren't fantastic, um, but these just sort of sharpened it up a little bit. Uh, annoyingly, one sort of gripe I would have with them is that it might be, and this might be uh, the calipers on my car, I actually have a feeling that uh, they're a bit seized, so I do need to get some new calipers and uh, to sort of revamp the whole braking system. Is that they were a bit squeaky when you're moving at first, and I think that was more just the sort of breaking in period of the uh, the pads. And I did speak to Luke at Loft about it, and he said he's not experienced that before. And if I experience any more of it, he's happy to send some new pads out straight away. So uh, I just wanted to see for the video if it went away, and it did. You know, it was it just didn't take long at all. I think there was a couple of mornings, you know, when it's been wet where it did squeak out of my driveway and that's only because it's at a 45 degree angle and you have to have your brakes on almost full as you pull away from the house. So that was the only thing I have you know, for like any gripes with, but that sorted itself very soon and um, went away, which is good. It's hard to really like, analyze brakes on a Defender, <laughs> um, you know, because there's nothing really to go by. I could just say it's better than before. It's also nice to have these slotted section of it that can clear water and mud and just give a bit more of a sort of grip and bite to the brakes as well. So over the year and a half that I've had it, I've had the wheels off a couple of times, you know, the general maintenance stuff like uh, balancing the wheels, moving them around or maybe changing tyres. And each time I have a little assessment of the brakes. The pads have not worn down much at all, which is good, but I guess you wouldn't expect that on a few thousand miles in a year and a half. And the discs still look really good. There's no uh, lip on it yet at all. And they are looking really good. And, you know, for me, I know you can't see them, but it's just nice to know there's one bit of the car that isn't rusting too much. And they definitely were resisting rust, which is quite nice as well. As I said before, I think I probably will hold my full judgment back until I get a new brake servo, brake lines, and new calipers all around. Because a few years ago, I did have an MOT advisory to uh, try and free the pistons, which I did. I took them all out, gave them all a clean service, the calipers, past the MOT but that doesn't mean they're back to normal. And I definitely can feel a bit of um, brake pull as I pull, as I brake, as I think one is more free than the other, allowing it to brake harder on one side and also uh, potentially keeping one slightly seized on and locked on at all times. So there's definitely some tweaking that needs to be done, but that's more of a, and that's gonna be coming up soon, I hope. It feels like a long time since I installed these brakes and I'm glad to finally be putting the video up but I think it's also important to you know test something properly before you review it or you put it out there uh, and this is more of just like a general like my view on it rather than like a review or this is what you should buy. I'm sorry if I've missed anything out I'm sort of just happy with them I haven't got really anything to like pick out and tell you about. If you have got any further questions uh, file them down in the comments and I'll get straight back to you you know I'm, I'm a bit quicker on comments these days and while you're there if you are down in the comments just between here and the comment section, there's a like and subscribe if you want to do it. Generally, I don't do it, but when people say it to me, I then remember to sort of like and subscribe. So, you know, it'd be helpful if you could. And uh, on that note, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll hopefully see you next time.